Now, as you mentioned, one of the targets hit was the Barze complex in Damascus. It was a center for research, development, production, and testing of chemical and biological weapons. But Syrians say that's incorrect. They claim the facility did not create chemical weapons, but is a research institution where they develop things like pharmaceuticals. Now, one man CBS News spoke to says the organization for the prohibition of chemical weapons visited the facility and didn't report anything wrong with the place. CBS News looked into that report and it noted the Syrians delayed the visit for security concerns but did not find any red flags. We aren't going to stand behind our government's aggression towards a sovereign nation. Closer to home, anti war protesters took to the streets of downtown Sacramento tonight to voice their opposition to the latest airstrikes. This, as local Syrians continue to check on the welfare of family members near the bombing areas. Let's go to CBS 13's Mark Thompson live in downtown Sacramento with more on their message tonight. Mark? Sure, in the streets are all clear right now, but anti war protesters gathered here near 16th and J earlier this evening. It was a modest crowd, but they were very vocal in their opposition to the latest airstrikes. Meanwhile, local Syrians are speaking out and say it's still uncertain about the future of those left in country. No war! No way! Around two dozen people gathered at the intersection of 16th and J in Sacramento, chanting and soliciting drivers to honk for their cars. We are standing up against the recent attacks that the United States is participating in against Syria, um, and which is obviously ramping up aggression between Iran uh, and Russia as Syria's allies, and we want to say that Sacramento won't stand for that. Last night, the U.S. with France and Great Britain launched airstrikes near the Syrian capital of Damascus in response to last weekend's chemical weapons attack in the rebel-held town of Douma. The U.S. pointing to the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad as the likely perpetrator. Um, there is actually no proof that the chemical attack actually took place, and even less proof that it was done by the Assad government. This is just a very hypocritical thing for the United States to do, considering we have so many atrocities here at home, to be the world's watchdog. I don't think they're qualified. Meanwhile, local doctor Mohammed Kabesh, who's from Syria, is concerned not only for the welfare of families still in country, but also for Syria's future. The chemical attack is, is, is terrifying. Kabesh would like to see a long-term plan in place, eventually leading to the Syrian people running their own democracy. And he's not convinced airstrikes will put an end to the use of chemical weapons. We have heard this before. We've heard it in 2013. We've heard it in 2017. And still chemical weapons were used. So, um, again, I'm not, I'm not sure yet how this would be different. And many of the protesters here tonight uh, were also protesting uh, two weeks ago at the Stefan Clark rally uh, near the Sheriff's Department substation in South Sacramento. And uh, they say that the U.S. should be involved in issues like that here closer to home instead of getting involved in another war. Sharin, back to you. A volatile time right now. Mark Thompson live in downtown. Mark, thank you. And Senator Kamala Harris speaking out on the airstrikes, tweeting this. I strongly support our men and women in uniform and believe we must hold Assad accountable for his unconscionable use of chemical weapons. But I am deeply concerned about the legal rationale of last night's strikes. And we're going to continue to monitor the latest developments in Syria with the latest in our 10 p.m. newscasts of war throughout, throughout the newscast. You can read more on our website, cbs13.com.